A friend of mine who's a food blogger asked me if I could make her a photo station where she could shoot images of the food that she makes on some nice weathered wood backgrounds. So I made a bunch of surfaces, experimented with different stains, and made a nice little rack to store them. The majority of the rack is going to be made out of 3 quarter inch thick sanded pine plywood. I clamped down a straight edge using spring clamps and then cut the pieces with my circular saw. A clamp down straight edge with a circular saw is my go-to way to cut up plywood. It doesn't take up a lot of space, you can do it practically anywhere, and I am able to get nice clean straight cuts. I'm going to use 2 by 2s to reinforce the corners and to make the racks that will hold the different surfaces. These 2 by 2s were a little bit rough, so I just gave them a quick sanding with 100 grit paper on my Ryobi Orbital Sander. I used a paint roller to apply just basic white latex house paint to the plywood and 2x2s. Painting the pieces beforehand is a lot easier, but I'll definitely have to go back and touch it up after I assemble. I screwed on the 2x2s that I'm going to use to reinforce the corners. I started by screwing down through the 2x2s because this was easier to see and keep the edges aligned, but I'm also going to drive screws through the other side that way the connections will be nice and strong. I also screwed on the horizontal 2x2s that are going to act as the racks. And I used a 2x3 to create consistent 2.5 inch gaps in between them. I screwed the back panel to the side panels and this thing was starting to take shape. Now because the front side is open, it's still a little bit wobbly. So I screwed on some strips of painted plywood that'll help stabilize the bottom. This will also give us a surface to attach wheels to if we decide that we need this thing to be more portable. The top is going to take quite a bit of abuse with all the setting of surfaces onto it. So I decided to use maple that I got from Forest to Home. It's a really cool company that can ship hardwood directly to your house. I gave all the boards a quick sanding before using my biscuit joiner to cut slots in them so that I could add these little plywood biscuits to help glue them all together and make the whole top nice and solid. A biscuit joiner is a really easy tool to use. You just lay out the boards and draw some pencil lines and then use those lines to create matching slots in the sides of the boards. Finding really wide hardwood boards can be tricky and expensive, so this technique comes in really handy when making large tabletops. I applied glue in the slots, on the biscuits, and on the edges of the board, and then used my Maker Brand T-Bar clamps to clamp the whole thing together. These are really heavy duty clamps with a lot of travel, and they come in really handy for projects like this. I used a clamp on either side and then one on the top to keep the surface from buckling, and remember, you don't need to put that much pressure, just a little bit to hold the wood close together, but you don't want to crank the clamp so hard that you crush the wood. I've been making these surfaces for a while, and I want to make sure that they all fit before screwing on the top. I just used 2 inch finished screws to screw on the top. Now I thought about covering them with wood putty, but I thought the ability to take the top off in case this thing needs to be moved or reconfigured would be useful. Plus, there's plenty of surface on the inside of the screws for photography. I then sanded the whole top to 220 grit and got ready to apply some simple finish. Now before I apply finish, I always make sure to use a nice lint-free rag to wipe off all the dust. This is a really important step for finishing wood. I then used a new clean rag to apply a heavy coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. I love this finish. It's all plant-based. It's really easy to apply. You just apply a heavy coat like this let it sit for 10 minutes, apply a little bit more to any of the dry spots, wait another 10 minutes, and then rub out the excess with a nice clean rag. Now the majority of surfaces that she wanted were whitewashed wood finishes. And I'm gonna do a follow-up video showing the five different ways I came up with whitewashing wood. But she also wanted some natural warm looking wood and a modern gray surface, so I got some cedar two by sixes and biscuit jointed these together into a panel that I could do natural wood on one side and gray on the other. Before applying wood stain to soft woods, I like to use a wood conditioner. This just helps clean the wood and open up the pores a little bit, which allows the stain to go on more evenly. I brushed on some Varathane gray stain, let it sit for a few minutes, and then use this staining pad that I got from Home Depot to rub off the excess and really reveal the wood grain again. 
What's really cool about this process is that you can control how much of the grain shows through by how hard you rub out the wood. This created a nice contemporary looking surface, but she also wanted some ones that looked super vintage and really old, like they had been on a barn for hundreds of years. So I made up another cedar panel and I took a big heavy duty chain and just dented it all up. I then dragged some scrap steel mesh across the surface. This was to create a bunch of random dents and scratches. Next, I really want to layer on a bunch of different stains. So I started with a cup of coffee and some coffee grounds. Next, I splashed on some red wine. And I'm trying to do this in as random of a pattern as possible. I poured on some bleach, which definitely lightened up the wood and made a big splotch. Rinsed off the whole surface and then hit it with the chain again. I then added additional layers of red wine, coffee, Coca-Cola, and pretty much anything else I could find in the kitchen. What I started to see was that alternating between different types of stains and different types of distressing the surface was giving me this nice layered look that made it seem more authentic and not like it was all done to one surface at one time. Because whenever I applied the stain, they tend to go into the fresh dents. And this way my distress marks have slightly different tones. I did one more layer of coffee and then rinsed the whole thing off so that it would be ready for some simple finish. The simple finish really brought out the stains and the whole thing definitely had that vintage vibe that I was going for. I'll show you all the whitewash stains that I figured out in the next video, but if you can't wait, check out Radhi Shetty's Instagram page to get a sneak peek. She does some really cool recipes, is a super nice person, and I'll put a link to her channels in the description box below. Now, I am definitely no food blogger, but I do take a lot of finished product photos, and I kind of want to make a room-sized version of this so that I can shoot my furniture on different flooring options. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.